Yes, um, part of your research, actually a great part of it, actually deals with uh, neutrinos and how they um, interact. Um, in this case, interact with the Earth. But could you maybe just illustrate a little bit what a neutrino is to have a little picture about it? Well, the neutrino is a strange particle because you can't uh, touch it, you can't see it. Um, but it um, was uh, named and uh, by, by Pauli, pro, uh, Professor Pauli from Austria. He said that the neutrino uh, is necessary to fulfill the balance of energy um, from uh, the better decay. Uh, you see, the um, uh, the better decay is a problem because um, you need the energy coming from somewhere. And he said, I call this particle who has the energy, who leave, um, brings it to the better decay. Tesla even says that it was causing uh, the um, the better decay so that uh, he, Tesla said, if we could shield uh, this radiation, then uh, no radioactivity would uh, exist on Earth. And um, this is even a bit more than uh, the idea of uh, um, Pauli was. Pauli said it was only influenced by neutrino radiation, but not, uh, it's not the cause. So this is what happens. Um, and, um, well, uh, the idea of today is that these particles are oscillating. And I would say they are oscillating between a negative charged electron, maybe, and a positive charged positron, the antimatter, so that in the average, uh, the, um, uh, the charge is zero and the mass as well, because one time it is mass and other time it is antimass. So in the, uh, in the average, it's, it's zero. But, but you see a particle uh, with no mass and with no charge otherwise would be in a conflict to, to the idea that it has energy and, and impulse, you see. So this is really important to, um, um, well, to solve this problem in physics. Ver thank you. Um, so yeah. taking, taking, taking what you just said, the characteristic of the neutrino, um, there are ways to measure it, but how exactly um, does it relate to the expanding earth theory what actually happens is do we know what actually happens inside of the uh, core of the earth between the neutrinos creating this expansion you, you see i've never been in the center of the earth <laughs> uh, to to look what happens but what we have learned is that it uh, will interact uh, if better decay occurs and and the question is, what do they do? They interact. We have, we have seen by these experiments by the uh, Kamiokande detector that that uh, there is an interaction uh, with the core of the Earth, which uh, standard physics doesn't explain. Because anyway, what whatever happens, the weak interaction is not strong enough to interact uh, in that way what it is doing. 50%, you, you, you need to know that we have billions, 66 billions per second per square centimeter. Uh, this is an enormous amount of, of neutrinos which are coming from, from space uh, every second. So that, so that this question nearly is not uh, solved, is, is uh, unexplained. Anyway, and uh, I have a special model. Um, I can explain to you what happens um, uh, in, inside the Earth. It's only a model because we, we really we don't know what happens. But uh, I explained it to the students in the following way. Um, if you uh, see that we, we have different uh, particles with different density, with different um, weight, uh, we get layers. Uh, the Earth, uh, on the surface, we are living on the crust of the Earth, which, which is solid matter. On, uh, on this, 
uh, we have water, which is fluid, and on uh, as the next layer is uh, gas, uh, um, which we are breathing, and outside uh, we have the ionosphere, which is something like uh, a plasma uh, with uh, ions. Um, and if you go outside the ionosphere, there is the space. And, and, and the weight, uh, your weight in the space is nearly zero. That means um, you have no weight. The mass is zero. Yeah, this is, you can't measure it. And the question is, I, I put to, to the students, uh -huh. what is your mass, what is your weight in the center of the earth? And the right answer well, is I have no no weight. Uh, uh, it isn't zero. If I'm in the center of the earth, you see. And so if in the center of the earth, we have the same um, conditions as in space, um, what are, how are the layers? Uh, or how do they look like if I put them all inside the earth? Then we have the uh, very thin shell, uh, crust, crust of the earth. Inside we have liquid, which is the mantle, we know, as we know, this is liquid. And uh, inside the mantle we have the core, which is uh, consists of an outer core and an inner core. And nobody ever has uh, looked at this, but it has to be gas, and inside the gas it has to be plasma if we want to reach the situation in the center which um, uh, says that there is no weight, that uh, the weight is zero. And um, uh, so up to uh, these um, questions of density, it's, it is absolutely necessary that um, we have a core which consists of, uh, of gas and of plasma and the well, sometimes the students look very strange because they say they have learned uh, the core would consist of, of iron. Yes, you have, I've, you have I've heard the that. same, yes, yes. Yeah, you have learned the same, I think. And uh, you see, uh, in the average, uh, the weight of the core is the weight of iron. Anyway, but what is, what in reality it, it is... Um, consisting of and my model is that we have uh, neutrons in the core of the earth so, something like a neutron star a small neutron star consisting of all of, of, a, of an amount of neutrons and if um, they interact with neutrino radiation which is uh, running through the earth but 50 percent are interacting as we have learned as we have measured so uh, what happens? Oh, they um, create new matter. Yeah, first of all, they decay. The, the neutrons decay uh, under the in, uh, influence of, of the uh, neutrino radiation. And the neutrino are changing into matter so that we, at the end, get an, an expanding Earth. That means here the, um, the production of matter happens, uh, but... The story is not at the end because we have to consider what happens if a, a neutron is decaying. Then we get a proton and an electron, and this is what we call hydrogen. Hydrogen is, an, is a gas, and this gas is, is, is absolute opposite to, to the neutron. The neutron is small with a very, very high um, weight. And the gas, the hydrogen gas, has nearly no weight and is very, very big. So it needs a lot of space, and the space is not uh, is not uh, available so that it uh, comes under high pressure. And uh, so we have in the in the core of the Earth we have high pressure, and uh, and so that these uh, hydrogen gases are uh, falling back. Uh, to a neutron, uh, if if the needed energy and radiation is available, you see that if if we have a particle which is exploding, you you know that ex explosion means that energy is coming from that. Mm -hmm. That means uh, 
it's getting hot. Mm -hmm. And uh, if uh, you have the opposite, the implosion, it is uh, the energy is needed from the environment. And um, uh, you are able to calculate this. I have calculated this in my uh, book, um, Potential uh, Vortex, and um, um, and even in, in the English book, um, Scalar Waves. You, you are able yeah. to read this. Yes, that, that calculation. That means that uh, you are able uh, to, uh, to prove that uh, these uh, implosion uh, needs energy. And where's the energy coming from inside the core of the Earth? It's coming from the exploding uh, neutron. That means um, the implosion under high pressure has to wait till the energy is available from an exploding neutron and this is exploding it is separated uh, by the neutrino and you know that uh, by this explosion the electron is coming out of the neutron and is 10,000 times bigger <laughs> yeah. than the neutron had been before and the proton is afterward so that means uh, that a lot of space is needed so this is really the answer but the next problem by this model is that everything is happening at zero uh, degree Celsius. So, uh, no, no um, zero degree uh, Kelvin. So that at the absolute zero point of the, of the temperature, uh, this happens. That means that the center of the Earth is absolutely cold, which is opposite of what we have learned as well. Um, but these are uh, the consequences of this model that um, and this this model is explaining much more because it's it explains to us where the magnetic field is coming from because we have superconducting uh, uh, currents inside uh, the the core of the earth and these superconducting currents are producing um, magnetic fields uh, this what, what we learn at school is that it would be very hot and that there is iron and, and the iron, but we, we know that uh, at, at 1,000 degrees Celsius, uh, the iron is losing totally the magnetic uh, forces, so that it is absolutely uh, paramagnetic. It's, it's nothing. Understand. So if I may put together what we've uh, established right now, we have uh, the, the sun or uh, certain uh, celestial bodies emanating uh, these neutrinos which in turn interact with the core of our earth which in this case from the model you were speaking about is a, a gas or more like a plasma and due to the high pressures there the um, the processes that take part uh, through the neutrino produce matter and at the same time energy um, which also is emitted by the earth in turn as a magnetic field and this matter that is produced through the interaction of the neutrinos and the plasma then produces more and more mass which actually expands the earth from inside like a balloon just very simply putting it would that be right yeah, yeah that's that, that's absolutely right you see that we have an equilibrium state uh, of neutrons and hydrogen gas and in the average of both, we have the weight of iron. And this is why, um, why the, uh, we have learned that the core would ex uh, uh, consist of iron, which is absolutely wrong. Mm 